Hi, I'm Zach, and this is Nick, and today we're going to show you a complete guide to fix anyone's shoulder, okay, for rehab. Also, it's going to be for injury prevention as well, all right? And I'm going to let Nick talk a little bit about what he went through and how we were able to fix him. He actually had a labrum tear. He still has the tear, yet he can throw, he can lift, and there's absolutely no pain in his shoulder. Uh, so about a year and a half ago, um, I was in a baseball game, and I dove for a ball, and I actually landed on this, this shoulder, so it kind of concaved in as I landed and I knew I, I tore something so I went to the doctor I got the MRI and uh, he said you tore your labrum so the doctor told me um, I could either get surgery or do rehab so I decided to, to uh, hit up Zach and do the rehab um, he put me through the whole shoulder protocol and now I'm back to throwing I'm back to benching and I don't really have any pain anymore and you still have the tear correct yeah I still have the tear you know the doctor said it wasn't going to repair itself because it doesn't get a lot of blood supply so So before we go in and show you the exercise we use as a foundation to fix everyone's shoulder and also injury prevention, I just want to talk a little bit more about our philosophy so you can better understand why we selected the exercise we did. So it wasn't until I discovered that the lower piece okay, of the rear delt, the, the muscle that runs across into the infraspinatus there. So here's the rear delt right here. See this little piece right here? That's what we're concentrating on. And here's the infraspinatus. See how it runs right over it? Okay, so this is going to have the most effect on basically being able to access the infraspinatus efficiently. If that is underdeveloped, it makes it nearly impossible to fully fix the shoulder. And once I was able to figure out exercises to specifically target this, that's when I started seeing all my athletes really improve to 100% that had severe shoulder problems, including myself. So if this is underdeveloped, what happens is, is the shoulder then is going to want to round forward and it's not going to be positioned back to work correctly with the scapula. So we want to, this really takes it and puts it back into position here. Once it's in better position, now you can go back in. You can start strengthening up the infraspinatus like the PTs do. And rather than feeling in the front of the shoulder, you're actually going to feel it in the infraspinatus. That's what I see a lot of athletes, they do, they do all this rotator cuff work and all they do is really feel it in the front. Okay, well that's because that's underdeveloped. And also when, when PTs try to develop you know, different Y's, T's, and arrows. They try to develop the lower traps, okay, the posterior delt, the rhomboids. Well, what happens is a lot of the time when you go to do this, it just becomes an upper trap exercise because this is underdeveloped. So the foundation lies for me in first fixing this, then you can go back in, start working on the lower traps and the infraspinatus. But without this, you're shooting in the dark and you're going to get very minimal gains with someone with shoulder issues. And one last thing I want you to understand is you can do as much mobility stuff as you want. You could get massage, chiropractic, okay. Guess what? Until that muscle's fixed, all this mobility stuff's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna, it's not, it's not strengthening the thing that is causing the problems. And also if you have winged scaps, you know where you can fit like your hand underneath the back of the shoulder blade there. Well, guess what? Go and look in the mirror and try to make a muscle back there, and I guarantee there is nothing developed here. And if you do all this stuff, where you're, when you're rolling up with the ball and you're, and you're working on the, the serratus, all it's gonna do is make the problem worse. So this exercise really kind of saved my shoulder in essence. It has a very rear delt dominant exercise. So when I first started, I started with five pounds, pretty light, and I was just able to go up about this high and still feel it in my rear delt. If I went up any higher, I would start to get my traps taken over. I start to feel it in the front delt. And that's not what you want at all with this exercise. So I started out nice and low and just feel that muscle contract. So just pulling up his pants, it's always doing. He's just up, leaning forward, and just pulling up his pants. Chest up as well. So his elbows are out a little bit and he just keeps his hands in tight and just pulling up his pants. And we only started like five or six pounds. And then as he got better, go ahead and turn back over this way. As he started to prove, we started to open up his range of motion. So then he started to go back here and really get into it a lot deeper back behind his body. And notice when I do this exercise, I'm only using one dumbbell. So you don't, you eliminate the trap activity, okay? If I use two dumbbells, people tend to shrug up and turn into a trap exercise. We use one dumbbell, but we go through the motion with both arms. So for, I had a uh, torn labrum in my shoulder and for 20 years couldn't do any type of barbell exercise. You know, for my chest, including the incline, 
And I started here at Core Excel three months later doing the uh, shoulder program. And I'm able to do two and a quarter for sets of 10 now, back on the incline. So the next exercise in the protocol would be the delt backs. Right here we got the incline bench set up to about 45, okay? You don't want it too shallow and you don't want it too steep, all right? 45 is good. You're gonna get on it like it's a boogie board like this. And all you're gonna do is, see how my, my, my hand supinated down like a bicep curl? You're gonna keep it supinated. All you're gonna do is bring your hands behind your body, almost behind your butt. So you right to the butt line and back down. So see how he's here, okay? You might start out, if you don't feel it in that delt piece, you start feeling it in your trap, he might start right to there. And that's where I was in the very beginning. I was very limited you range You can see this popping out right here. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. And then you get better, you wanna to try to go back behind your butt line, okay, and really get into it. And he's got, he started with like literally three pounds right there, that's all he did. Because it, it's, if he was doing too much weight, it would shoot up into the front of his shoulder. You'll start he'd seeing trap, the shrugs. And he'd start feeling pain in the front of his shoulder. So all we did was, is that's where he would develop to. And then the goal is, is five, six pounds, you can be behind that line. That's all we're trying to do right there. If you're really looking to get fixed and to do the exercise right from the start, the best thing you can do is to do private sessions with me through a video call. So we can do it anywhere in the world. So this next exercise we're gonna show you is basically uh, our variation of doing like um, a reverse fly, wise T's and arrows, okay? The problem with these exercises are, is that if you do them with two hands, Okay, and you're lying face down this way, what's gonna happen is it's gonna start really working onto the rhomboids and it's gonna put more torque onto the traps. And you're gonna get very minimal activation into the infraspinatus and the rear delt. So that's why you're gonna see we're gonna be doing it on our side and we're gonna be doing it down low this way. Now what's, what's nice about this is that the lower portion here, when you're down and you're going here, you're gonna feel the rear delt, but this is a very infraspinatus dominant exercise because it works in horizontal abduction and what I found is that lower plane here, if we go all the way here, then we can really contract the delt. But if we stay down here, this is all infraspinatus. So you wanna feel this exercise. If this is the rear delt here, okay, you wanna feel it underneath, okay? Kind of behind the armpit there. That's where you're gonna feel a lot of the torque. You're also gonna feel the rear delt, but just make sure that you have an understanding of this muscle here when you're doing it, which is the infraspinatus. So go ahead and just talk about the technique and the positioning. So to set up, you want to set up with the dumbbell right in front of you. You don't want it to be too low, okay? You want it to be right in line with your neck, all right? And when you come up, like Zach said earlier, you don't want to come up too high because you're going to lose the infraspinatus. You want to come up and you want to turn slightly in at the top, okay? Come up, turn slightly in, and notice how my arm is straight, okay? It's not bent. Keep your arm straight. It's a little bent. There's a little bend in it. Yep. Just a little bend, and notice how he's coming up this straight line here. That's his landmark right in front of the shoulder, and then he comes up that straight line, and he just goes right to there like that. If you do this exercise in the mirror, you'll notice if you're going in a straight line or not, okay? Sometimes you think this is the straight line. No, that's gonna hit your traps. This right here is the straight line that we're looking for. So once the rear delt starts getting developed more uh, from these three exercises, that's when we go back in and we start adding more of the PT-like exercises that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So that's when we start doing more external rotator cuff and different exercises like this, okay, to target more of the lower traps and the rhomboids. And then we also do different rowing exercises, okay, in order to get the teres major to work along with that lower section of the rear delt. Now we do have an app you can purchase through our website, okay? And that really teaches you exactly how much volume you need based on the injury that you have. And also there's more, the videos are more extensive on these exercises that we showed you. And there's a lot of testing too that's involved so you know exactly what weight load you have to get to and the range of motion that you need to achieve on each exercise.